Welcome back to Board Game Science. I'm your host, Dr. Ransom Poitras, and I'm excited to talk to you today about the next game we're spotlighting coming all the way from Italy. Well, sort of. It was designed by an Italian, Yalma Hawk, and exquisitely illustrated uh, by Sabrina Miraman, published in 2017 by Blue Orange Games, which is based in California. I'm talking about photosynthesis, which is this beautiful two to four player game that's designed to take roughly 45 to 60 minutes. So I'm gonna talk just briefly about some of the game mechanics and how it's played, and then we'll talk a little bit about the science behind it. Here I've laid out a three player game that's well underway so as to demonstrate the various subtleties of some of the rules. The game is basically played in a series of rounds. Each round has two parts, the photosynthesis phase and the life cycle phase. In the photosynthesis phase, you generate light points based on which trees are being hit by light. Bigger trees generate more points. Let's look at an example here. Light is coming from the sun here and move straight across the board. Seeds generate no light points. Small trees, one point. Medium trees, two. And large trees, three. However, trees that are in shadow get no points. A small tree casts a one tile shadow. A medium tree, two tiles. And large, three tiles. So in the case here, this small tree is in the shadow of this small tree and doesn't get any points. There is an exception. If the tree in shadow is bigger than the tree casting the shadow, it does receive light points. And that's exactly the case here. The small tree casts a one tile shadow, but the tree in that space is a medium tree and thus it gets the light points since it's bigger than the small tree. Once you've figured out how many light points you have, then the life cycle phase begins. During this phase, players use light points to perform actions. You can buy seeds and trees from your board to make them available to use by putting them here. You can spend light points to grow your tree that's already on the board from one size to the next, or you can plant a seed. You must plant a seed near an existing tree. The distance from the tree you can plant a seed is dependent on the size of the tree. So you can plant seeds further away if you're planting based on a larger tree. Lastly, you can collect a large tree. When you do this, you remove the large tree from the board, and then you take a scoring token from one of these piles. The pile you draw from depends on where on the board the tree was planted in the first place. So the board tiles are marked with either one, two, three, or four leaves moving into the interior of the board. Tiles closer to the interior have higher value scoring tokens. They're more competitive tiles, basically. Once you've spent your light points, the round ends. The sun rotates around the board, and you start a new round. Once the sun has rotated three times all around the entire board, the game ends and the points from your scoring tokens are tallied to determine the winner. That's basically how the game is played. Well, now that you know a little bit about how the game is played, let's talk a little bit about the science. Now, Yalma has said that when he was designing this game, he was not so much interested in science or trying to teach anything as he was in kind of exploring the interplay of uh, shadow and light. And so the tree and the photosynthesis part of this really just provided a convenient vehicle, a convenient tool for him to kind of play and express that idea. Although, to his credit, I've got to say, as far as I know, this is the only game whose entire gameplay is designed around throwing shade at your opponent. Let's talk a little bit about the, the gameplay and where the science does at least sort of match up or is at least analogous. Uh, we can start with the title, right? So photosynthesis means photo, light, and synthesis to create or build. And so in the game, you're trying to create light points uh, in order to do actions to build other things. Uh, and so that's sort of analogous to the way real photosynthesis is. 
In real photosynthesis, you are combining carbon dioxide and light uh, and water, and you are creating sugar and oxygen in water. And so you, there is kind of a synthesis going on that is based on light. So it's a little bit more complex though than, than what he's got going on here. One of the other nice things about this, I think that's probably more an artistic thing than anything else, is that in a four player game, each player has a type of tree or color that represents what we might think of as typical for a particular season. So there are winter trees, uh, there are spring trees, there's also autumn and summer trees as well. He's also tried, I think, to represent the idea that we would intuitively understand that a taller tree is going to be able to drop its seeds over a wider area. And that's true, however, it's not the only way that trees kind of spread their seeds. Uh, in fact, trees will use, plants will use things like wind and water and all kinds of animal carriers to disperse seeds over a really wide range. So it doesn't quite match up. Additionally, as we would all know as well, light is not just simply binary. It's not simply either the tree gets light or it gets zero light. It's in pitch blackness, right? And doesn't grow at all. Plants will find a way, and if they're in kind of a shaded region here where they might be blocked, an actual tree might, or an actual plant might bend a little bit to try and maximize its light. And some trees and plants thrive in a little bit of shade. I don't know if you've anything like me, I've tried putting a couple of plants out on our front deck in full sunlight just to watch them wither away. Some of them do really badly in full light. So that's, that's another thing that's not quite, quite right. And this is, you see this concept really well if you look at the tropical rainforest, for example. You've got different layers with different amounts of light reaching through the different layers, and there are different plants that thrive in each of those different layers, right? So at the top, you've got the emergent layer, and then the canopy layer, and then the understory and the forest floor. It's different amounts of light, all the same, and you've got different plants who do really well at those different stages. So it doesn't quite match this idea of full sun, full shade kind of thing, and if you don't get the, the full sun, then you're not growing. But I don't think that's the point, right? And he's created a really excellent and fun game that kind of you know, plays with these ideas of shade and light, which is what he wanted to do really well. Hopefully it helps you understand a little bit about this game and, and that you've enjoyed understanding a little bit about how it reflects reality and where it's a little bit off. And I look forward to sharing the next one with you.